WTF, man? How could you forget to invite me to your birthday party? Nobody likes you. I have 417 people that would disagree with you. Social networks don't count, you loser. You could die and no one would care. It's too bad you can't see who come to your funeral. Find out who your real friends are. Who says you can't? Have you ever wondered what your social media friends will write about you when you die? A new comedy called Friended to Death explores just that by analyzing our online relationships. And joining me now are the film's director, Sarah Smick, and the star of the film, Ryan Hansen. Uh, welcome to you both. We really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Hi. Thank you for Hi. having us. So, Sarah, Sarah, let's start with you. You, you directed and came up with the idea for this film. How did it come about? What, what, what popped into your mind that said that someone might think this way and, oh yeah, I'll fake their death? We, well, there's a, a lot of reasons that uh, I wanted to make this film. Um, partly, we, my writing partner Ian Michaels and I had read an article about a guy who actually faked his death in life, not, not on social media. And he hosted his own funeral and only one person showed up and it was his mother, sadly. And he proceeded to write 44 handwritten notes to all of the so-called friends that didn't actually come, reaming them for not being, you know, good friends. And we thought that was fascinating, the idea of somebody actually, I mean, we've all, we've all thought about it, who would come to our funeral, but to actually go through with it is a whole other ball game. And, you know, considering the consequences of something like that, we just, it's absurd. And, and we just wanted to explore the forces at play in, you know, personally and environmentally that could push someone to that extreme. And then I had a personal interest in social media and exploring the dangers of it and its impact on our relationships and how, you know, that paradox sure. of somehow we're, we're connected and yet disconnected. And, and you know, I wanted and to do that in the film. And increasingly disconnected. And, and Ryan, you, you play a traffic cop uh, who's obsessed with social media presence and also it, it is rather a, rather a jerk in, in some ways. How did you prepare for this? Well, uh, the first step I took in preparation for playing a traffic cop obsessed with social media was I grew out a mustache. I grew out the mustache real thick and, uh, and nice. And then I also um, I had a lot of experience with um, getting uh, tickets, uh, parking tickets. And so I got to see them firsthand and really study them um, and how they um, approach life. And then I just kind of mixed the, the mustache with the, um, uh, with the traffic um, ticket giving, and I have a Twitter account. So, and then I just put that all in there. And and, and Ryan, do, do you do you like the character you play? I mean, he he, like I said, I I watched some clips, and he comes off a little bit like a jerk, but rather sad. Do do you have a soft spot for him? Yeah, well, you just kind of feel bad for him. Uh, and it was actually really fun to play kind of just a sad loser douchebag guy who who is obsessed with. Um, social media and, and, and trying to like make friends that way and not really living in the real world. So yeah, I, was, I felt bad for him because I, I feel like I kind of know people like that. Ugh. Yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure we all do. And, and sure. Sarah, uh, in the making of this film and, and the research and the writing and actually uh, and everything else, what, what changed in your mind about social media? Do you, do, are you, are you, do you want rid of it? Do you want it out of your life? How do you feel? I think social media has a lot of different uses. You know, each platform is different. I think Facebook in particular is great for marketing and uh, wider outreach, but I, I think it's really about expectations and, you know, about the user experience. I think if you approach it expecting to get meaningful relationships and, you know, expecting it to be a substitute for your, your real face-to-face -face friends, it, I, I think that's what's dangerous. I think if you, if you approach it, you know, saying, you know, this is this is a marketing endeavor or, you know, I'm recruiting people for a charity I'm working on, whatever. I think that's fine, but I, I just think there's a danger in, in allowing it to to be a surrogate for more meaningful face-to-face -face friendships. Yeah, uh, Ryan, a, a surrogate, that's a very good point. There's another very good point. You mentioned you have a Twitter account. How do you give someone an obituary in a 140 characters? I mean, that, that seems absurd. No, no one's life is worth only 140 characters. Well, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's pretty tough. I think Michael, uh, the character, tries to do it. And if I tried to do it, mine would say, um, lover of life, lover of people, and lover of partying. 
Is that 140 characters? I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't count the characters in that. It sounds like it, it would less. fit. Yeah, I think it would. Are you, uh, Ryan, are you gonna are you gonna ditch social media? Because I, I think we all go through this, don't we? Say, like, okay, you know, I've I've had enough of Facebook and LinkedIn and all those things. I'm just gonna ditch it, cut cut my ties. Are you thinking about that after this role? Yeah, yeah, I've tr I've tried to ditch it a few times, and then you end up kind of just cr crawling back to it. Um, but I think yes, it's pro. There's pros and cons to it. You know, I think in moderation, anything is okay. Um, almost anything. Um, no, I'm not gonna ditch it. No, I think it's good. Um, almost great. anything is okay. Oh, we'll leave it there. The movie <laughs> is out in theaters on May 2nd and available video on demand May 9th. Sarah and Ryan, thank you very much for joining us on Digits. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much. I'm Simon Constable and this is WSJ Live.